Hello, I'm George Call. Welcome to part one of a Cedar Ridge or Cedar Cove. I'm not quite sure how to what to name it yet. But this might be more than a three-part series because we're doing an 18 by 24. So the big emphasis in this series is how to become a impressionistic painter. So we start from the very beginning, not concentrating on detail. In this part one, we figured out where the shapes were and came up with some very generalized value color. So I use big brushes and I think I use the smallest brush for just putting in some basic shapes. So follow me along and uh, we can get this done step by step. All right, get outside and paint, paint with your friends and get critiques and do not be intimidated by a white canvas. All right, keep painting. Bye-bye. Well, hello and welcome to a new series called Union Gulch, I believe. And uh, this one, the big uh, story is we're doing an 18 by 24 and we want to introduce you to and make you more familiar with impressionistic painting and techniques. So um, we are going to be using our uh, ultra blue alizarin uh, cad orange yellow ochre uh, bismuth uh, yellow naples bismuth yellow medium transparent oxide red transparent oxide brown we have some dark grays light grays purple and titanium white. I think we also have a Viridian over here on the left, maybe some royal blue. I have some Cerulean up on this area here. Um, looks like olive and uh, Shiva yellow. I don't know why I've got Shiva out, but we'll see how that works out. So um, this, because it's a 18 by 24, it might be more than three sessions. In fact, I'm, I would not be at all surprised if we go more than three sessions. But today, of course, we want to put in an accurate um, map of where the shapes are going to be and take a stab at um, value color. So this is a no freak out session and it's just going to be uh, 30 minutes and let's get started. So I got my timer started and we will get going. Oh, and I got my two knives here. My T7 and my Connoisseur. I love my Connoisseur. Oh, my brushes, I'm using uh, 2025s today. I'm using a 6, a 4, and a 2. I believe they're got that right. 6, 4, 2. Very good. All right. So let's make a drawing color that's got some warmth in it. So I'm going to go yellow ochre, transparent oxide red. Yellow ochre, transparent oxide red, Naples, nice color. All right, I got my paper towels underneath. I got my gamsol to the right, and I'm just going to get a little bit of turp and then dry it out of my brush because it's been stiff. I've been to a show in two shows in Kansas. So I'm a little, just really ready to get back into painting again. And I'm just getting some good basic shapes in here. That may be too big here. Found this in Utah in uh, May when we were out there, Jenny and I. And I'm going to add some ultra blue to this mixture now, over on one side. There's been oxide red, a little Naples, nice dull green. And 
And what I think I see is trees here, trees here, no trees here. This is a bunch of trees in here, or junipers, I'm sorry. And great big juniper here. Dark shadow running off of here. The juniper will come down a little bit. Some rocks. And more green up in here. Junipers. Junipers. Excuse me, I gotta sneeze. Back. While I do that and sneeze, I can get back and take a look at my sheets. I think so far so good. And I'm going to lighten up this green here. And there's like a kind of a light area here, which is more ground cover green. And some more here, which is very light. Okay, I think I'm start. See, I kind of build one thing off the other, and uh, go. Just kind of hope these shapes start making more sense to you. And this is kind of open right in here. I need to get some more darks in this area here. I'm gonna add more blue to the mixture. And this is. This gets a very, that's a good shadow dark up in here. I should be using a bigger brush by now, but I've got this thing in my hand. And this guy is going to be dark in a few places. And his shadow is going to go this way and this way. Let me get back here. See, I might have this tree too far to the left, but I'm not sure yet. I'll figure that out. It's not looking too bad. All right, let's uh, switch brushes. Let's go bigger. So I'm going to go to the number six. And I want to get some, some alizarin and some white. <coughs> I'm going to get a little royal blue in here. Alizarin and royal blue. A little bit of ultra in there now. I'm going to thin it down. I'm just going to start thinking about under color here. I think that might work for now. <clears throat> I'm going to just go to an even bigger brush, this great big soft uh, gold star craft. I think it's something from Hobby Lobby. Got some great big brushes there. Just want to try to get some a little bit of the warm color in here. There it is. I'm getting some Gamsol in this mixture. Can I go back to a little bit of purple? Royal blue. <coughs> Royal blue. Lizard. A little bit of the warm. I think that's working pretty good so far. I want to try to keep that thin. So I'm just using the paper towel. Keep it thin, that's a good base coat. I think I can work on top of that very nicely. 
Now on the other side, I'm going to make a much warmer, brighter mixture. Let me get back and take a look. And I think so far we're working it pretty good. All right, let's make that mixture. I've got this stuff right here. Let me see what I can do with it. By adding some Naples, Naples and white to it. Naples and some titanium white. Might be too dull. I'm gonna have to just go more Naples. There's a little bit of green in there. Can I add just a touch of olive in it? There we go. That's a nice value right there. So I'm going to go in here now, back with my number six. Get some of that purple out of there. And put that in here. Now I know there's different tones within this ridge or this cliff, but I'm just going to get one in for now. Keep it thin. and go with it that way. Now I know I can use some of this stuff down below and it seems to come out from here. And curves around here. And gets a little darker <coughs> down in here. So I go to that other pile I had, which was a little bit darker value, which you can see from the overhead camera. And now I'm just really getting that in quickly. I'm almost thinking of going over to my bigger brush, but I think for now I'm doing okay. Oh, I need lighter, lighter, lighter. Darker. Lighter. Okay. There's some lighter stuff up in here too. So what I'm thinking as, as I go through this is I'm trying to kind of squint at the same time, but figure out where these lighter colors or the darker colors are going to be and take my best jab at it based on that rough little sketch that I had down here. Okay, now I need some darker mixtures of green for the junipers. So let me work on that mixture. So getting my mixing knife here. Let me get some olive. Get some ultra blue, yellow ochre. Need more of that yellow ochre. And then I need it to go lighter. And see how I'm just going into this lighter color with it for the different shades of juniper. There's a lot going on in this reference, but I love the, the um, abstract shape of it, of going into it. It's got a good lead-in. I'm a sucker for lead-ins. Okay, juniper time. Better loosen this up here a little bit. I think I need some darker parts to this, so I'm going to go Viridian, Blue, Yellow Ochre. 
transparent oxide brown. Transparent oxide brown. Yellow ochre. There we go. Now we're talking dark. You see it? I mean, and when you look at the reference, you can see it. This baby is going in well. I see some darks back here. And I see some darks in here. But this is the money dark right here. Got to get some of these guys. And there's a dark over here somewhere. But this guy, really, he's big. So we're going to bring him down even more. So I'm modifying my design just by... Once you get those values in, you can certainly tell where your problems lie. But that's a nice shape right there. And there's another dark coming off of here. Alright, let's go to the lighter mixtures. So let's go back to Ultra Blue, Yellow Ochre. And we're going to go to lighter mixtures by adding some Naples in here. <clears throat> Thirteen minutes left. Doing well, okay. Adding some turp here. And working in some juniper colors. I uh, used to have pack llamas. I had got one left, and one of them was looking in the window at me from the corral here. He's my last surviving llama. I think he's 22, 23 years old. And those were my pack animals to get me back in the backcountry to paint. They carried my paints and my camping equipment. Cardamom is the guy looking in my window. I fed him this morning. He's just curious, that's all. But in the morning, he's definitely there waiting for me, saying, where is my food? I think I see some silvery stuff in this juniper in front. I'm adding some light gray and a little bit of titanium white, and I'm going to add that up in here. And you can kind of see there's just a slight difference. It's all you need, just little differences. Now, I also see some darks down in here. It's juniper, but it's still it's grass and stuff like that down in here. There's also lights running through it. Some of the, some of the worms, some reds. And I'm, since I have these greens down here, I'm gonna be putting them in. I put it in hard like that and then thin in other places like that. So here's a thin, and then here is a thick. I mean, there's some real good darks in there, too. So I'm doing ultra blue, transparent oxide, red on that. Now there's some real subtle light greens in here. And I'm going to go back to the titanium white. A little bit of transparent of uh, yellow ochre and some silvery, you know, some light gray. But you can see it's just a silvery gray. And I'm going to add that in in these areas right in here. So it's a real soft. If you guys what I'm trying to guide you away from is getting in here and trying to paint every tree and rock. I'm squinting down. I'm trying to get basic shapes and value color in, in all areas. Just coming in with these thin paints.
And now I'm going to take some of these silvery greens over in here in the lighter areas. I need to get some reds in there too. All right, let's see if I can get some darker greens right up in here. Now back to light again. And I'm just trying to cover up some of the red, I mean the white peeking through here with this bigger brush. And I'm going to go back to lighter stuff here. to establish a dark right up above the junipers. It's, I think it's a, it's a um, junipers in shadow. So I'm going to do ultra blue, yellow ochre, ultra blue, transparent oxide brown. Some of the stuff I use in here. And I think some of this dark stuff goes clear over in here. But as you can see from the reference, I'll try to get out of the way of the camera, that there's a dark up on top of the junipers. And there's some good darks up in here and here. I'm going to get some Light red, tad red, tad red, and I'm going to put some dull reds in up in here. And down in here, and here. All right, let's get back. What I'm going to do off camera, because it's tedious, I'm going to go uh, cover up these greens, or I mean the white coming through the greens, and um, do some of that cleanup work off camera, and I recommend that you do it also. All right, now what we want to do is get a nice blue sky. In. So, so far you can see everything is pretty light. Not light value, I mean, uh, we didn't put a lot of pigment down. We kept these uh, paints thin, and if you have it too thick, and what I'm going to be, you can just use your bigger brush and cover up, take off some of the stuff is too thick, or you can spread it around like I'm doing. I'll do that off camera. All right, so let's get up in the sky. So let's get some titanium white. And let's get some cerulean. And let's just get that up there. And that will be our block in. which is part one of a, at least a three, four, or five part series. All right, here we go. I'm using my big brush. Very thin. Need more cerulean in this thing. Cerulean. this way when I was plein air painting. My first two years of painting landscapes was outside. I didn't come into the studio. I was just painting outside. I mean, I didn't do it every day, but 
I think I was still working, you know, with a real nine to five job. And I'd go out on evenings on summer days or on weekends or get away for the weekend with a llama or two. And uh, get out there and paint. Okay, now what I'm doing is just keeping this thin. Sorry for my back here. And that's going to probably bring us pretty close to the end of this session. Let me check my time. Oh, we got uh, just under four minutes. Okay. So I'm going to do some of that tidy work uh, with my brush. So I'm cleaning my brush and I'm just getting drying it out and I'm going to cover up just by, see how I scrub it up or down and try to cover up some of that white stuff. It's not perfect, but getting some dark in here. I'm a little too dark right here, so I'm going to see if I can scrape this dark down just a little bit. Little finger work there. And this is introducing also these soft edges. We are going to have hard edges. I can see one we need right down in here. But that's not going to happen in session number one. Edges, I'm always cheap on the edges, so I'm trying to get my edges done. So I don't have a brush for the warm, so I'm just going to use my finger for that. This needs to be even darker on that side. Okay, when you get to this stage, you can kind of get another look at it, a more complete look at where it should be. And I know I have to get lighter in here, in, this, in these areas here and here. But for now, I'd rather have some darks as a base and uh, a little bit of light on top of it. So that's getting me started here and I still have some whites coming through so I'm just going to continue getting that done. Now if that buzzer doesn't ding on me in one hour or one minute and 14 seconds I will mix a nice dark again. Blue Brilliant, transparent oxide brown. And I will get back with my dark brush, or my big brush here, transfer it. I need more brown. And I will work on this guy. And this guy. More darks up in here and here. other darks in here. I think there's a just get more lizard in this thing. Lizard. Some nice dark rocks in here. And here. And I need more dark green. Transparent oxide red. This guy needs some work. That's the digger. All right, that brings us to an end. And thank you so much for being with me on part one. And this was Blockin'. All right, cover up all those little white spots. I'll see you in part two.
right bye